It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with my co-host, Barnett Bain. Barnett, welcome. It's so good to be back in Los Angeles. I've well, it's been nice away. to see you. Yeah. Welcome back from um, New York. I Last feel... time I heard from you, you were um, walking up the spiral at the Guggenheim. I was walking up the spiral you at the You see anything good? Oh, it was amazing. I'm still uh, waiting for you. It was a great exhibit. It was a great time. A uh, bit of a torrential downpour when we got out, but uh, New York style, there was a guy there selling umbrellas. Fortunately, it yeah. lasted you almost till you got to the cab right That's before exactly it blew inside right. out. Right. You know that routine. Yeah. I, think I, I think I know that guy. I've done, I've I think done. I have more than a few umbrella I've skeletons broken umbrellas. in my... Yeah. So it's good to be back with you. You were missed last week. Yeah. No, it's great. It's, uh, it's, it, was, um, it was hard for me not to be here. Uh, I, of course, was in New York. You guys were having some technical challenges. And so one or two technical. I was part of the juggling to try to help you guys uh, get back on track. One but or I'm two glad technical I'm challenges. I'm going to have to get back to our guest this week and yeah. deal with that. Yeah, yeah. That well, will be fun. It was a really great conversation. Though. I know. We'll do it again. She's we amazing. We will do it again. Amazing. So, yeah. uh, the good news is, uh, not, in, not to say it's compensation, but it is to say it is a just and equitable world, a beautiful world we live in. <laughs> because go. to make amends for last week, we have yet another spectacular, spectacular guest joining us in studio uh, again this morning. And so without any further ado, I am going to um, give you a little heads up on who we have here. Marsha Weeder is the CEO and founder of Dream University. Uh, Marsha is also a close personal friend and a colleague of mine at the Transformational Leadership Council. Um, and uh, she is very, very well known, uh, having appeared many, many times in numerous, numerous media outlets with all the usual fantastic sus suspects, uh, Oprah several, several times. Um, she's also had her own PBS TV special. She's the author of 14 books that have been translated into gazillions of languages mm. having to do with dreaming and visioning, a subject close and dear to our hearts. Absolutely. She is a philanthropist. She's an activist. She's a visionary. She's an inspiration. She is, uh, and I love this about her, she is, amongst all these great things, she is particularly proud of being on the board of the Make-A-Wish uh, Foundation, which uh, tells you all you need to know about where this woman's heart is. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Marsha. I'm honored to be in the studio with both you handsome men. Lucky oh, me. handsome <laughs> men. She'll be back. She'll be back. <laughs> we'll be promoting the show. <laughs> <laughs> Such a gift, and I'm really uh, fond of your work, uh, unbeknownst to you, but I'll tell you that now, um, because it's, uh, it's moved me on more than one occasion. Um, you know, the, the finding our path, uh, our way in the world is, uh, I always see it as twofold. There's the way we're taught in, in terms of what we think we ought to be, and then for many of us, and all of us in this room, there was a moment in time where we realized that what we had been told about how our lives should look wasn't going to ultimately fill us in a particular way, a, a spiritual way and a sort of uh, self-evolving way. And your work is about helping people really connect to what it is they're here for and how to go about taking that from a, just a kind of a rumbling, if you will, to an actual full-blown expression in the world. And that's a tremendous, tremendous thing. So I want to start right away. That means we like her? We like her. Okay. <laughs> she's in. All right, she's in. Well, clearly you're aligned with the, with the work that I'm doing because you guys also, your show is all about waking people up. Yeah. It's ironic that all of my books are around dreaming because really what I want to do is wake people up. Yes. But I think that that's part of the path. Yeah, so I guess where I want to start is how did you come to this? And and I think I even know the story, so I'm going to guide you a little bit. It, it has something to do with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. There was a moment yeah. there for you, right? Yeah, I love that you know that. I'm very impressed. Well, a, I'm a fond of your work. done his homework. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, everything in life gets us ready to be who we are. <laughs> Beautiful, yes. And I think the ongoing practice of saying no more to what's no longer true and clearing away the clutter, but also the courage to ask what I think is the most confronting confronting question, which is, 
how do I want my life to be? Because if you're someone who practices living with integrity, which is essential for manifestation, the next question has to be, and what am I willing to do about it? So I did a little inventory of my own life many years ago. How did I want my life to be? And the answer was a bummer. I mean, I didn't like anything. I was, I was complaining and dissatisfied around, I call it my B list. I didn't like my body, my boyfriend, my business, the building that I was living in, the bank account that I had, mm. you know, just, it was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to change this and I didn't know what to change it to and I started out to do what I now call go on a passion quest so a passion quest you take a period of time you don't have to put the rest of your life completely on hold but you start asking questions like what is it that matters to me what is it that I want to create who am I really why am I here those those big boy and big girl questions and on a passion quest I was driving home I was in Washington DC at the time a radio commercial came on as you mentioned for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and literally the experience in my body was I don't know how to describe it other than something kind of went zing. I had this zingy feeling inside of me. And I, I, because I was kind of sparked and because I was in passion quest, meaning I was paying attention, and mm. then the quest part, I followed the feeling, which we so often don't do. It led me to a, a meeting where five of us sat around a table. Uh, boy, I remember it like it was yesterday, and it was almost 30 years ago. Exposed light bulb hanging down over the table. Mm paint peeling off the walls, nonprofit land. Mm -hmm. But the work that was being done there was priceless. And we were talking about how we were gonna raise money to send a kid to Disneyland and get another child a puppy dog. And I left that meeting and I went out to my car to put the mm -hmm. keys in the ignition. And I just started to sob. Mm. Something inside of me had been so inspired by who these people were and what they were doing. And at a certain level, I was really being shown my own purpose, my own mission, my own calling. Now, it had never occurred to me at that point that the next 30 years of my life would <laughs> sure. be about making dreams come true. But now I've been doing it long enough to get that this is what the next 30 years of my life is about. But that really was the moment, I would say, of awakening. It's like, you know, somebody needs to be... A woman with a mission, and the well, mission is we need to dream. You um, spoke about this zing moment. Yes. You sat there and something, you felt something Deeply. in your body. You had an open heart, you had an open mind, and something penetrated through, and you felt this thing. I loved it, the zing. And um, what, it's, what it says to me, it ties into something that is on the back of this beautiful um, book that Marsha just gave us oh you're gonna let you hold it for a while <laughs> it's not my turn maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> can you tell them the title of the book the book is called dreams are whispers from the soul uh, and that's to my point we um we have the capacity mm. and the destiny to begin to foster a relationship an intimate relationship with aspects of ourselves beyond us our soul our higher self however you frame it um, and this zing, these zing moments, these are like the, these are the siren calls of what is, uh, what awaits us, but what is us and beyond us. And on the back of this beautiful book, there is a beautiful quote from Marsha. There are the dreams we have for our life, and then there are the dreams that life has for us. Yeah. Um, and the call of the dreams that life has for us. When we pay attention, we, um, we hear the communication in those moments of zing. Yes, and they often bypass the brain. It's, good, it's a good thing. It goes past the logic. Because had I logically thought about, I'm going to dedicate my you life to helping out. people make dreams come true, yeah. part of me would have said, get a real job. And you're back on <laughs> what, what Freeman and I on this show, we call it the reservation. Yes. With apologies to... Uh, anybody that we correct, uh, that we offend with that political incorrectness. I was just in Canada and I used that word, and that is not the place to use that. Yeah. So um, we'll have to come up with new language. We call it this sort of. Well, I think the reservation. I, I, no, it, and I'm going to actually speak to that. Please. It's very appropriate language uh, because the reservation connotes a place that you really don't want to be and that you're told you ought to be on. And so I understand that there's a. Uh, a, a whole population of folks who have uh, this is what's happened in their experience 
but the, 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 the gripping part of that of like, wow, we really don't want to be confined to the limitations of just what we're taught and sold and, and buy into. Definitely There's another not. piece of life, which you're speaking to, Marshall. Well, her whole career. Yeah, this is uh, it. The whole, the whole stuff and substance of being, um, uh, of heralding a future of dreaming, which is what you're all about, right. is, has to do with inviting people and empowering people to move outside of the reservation, That's it. dare That's to it. dare to have a vision of a possibility that is larger than the rest of You know, I think we even, um, we owe it to our listeners to even define what we mean by dream because a, a, the difference between a dream and a fantasy, like winning the lottery, mm -hmm. is that in a dream you can actually design a strategy for it. However, the paradox is if we go to strategy too early in the dreaming process, you collapse the dream. we wind up compromising it down to what we think we realistically can accomplish or based on what's in our checking account. Now this is important because I know a big piece of your uh, work as well is helping people create goals. It's a delicate it's a balance, balance That's between exactly right. allowing for something to uh, unfold in a particular way and at the same time directing it so that we're not just wandering and wondering, that there's a kind of balance between allowing for something to become something right. and in the same moment nudging it towards something. Yes, because if we never go to strategy, the dream remains a fantasy or a nice idea. Yeah. But if we go to strategy too soon, we wind up compromising the dream down to what we realistically believe is possible. And with that, we squelch the passion. It just becomes another thing on our to-do list. Sure. I, my philosophy is let's explore how we can turn our lives right side up mm. so that we're standing in our purpose, connected to our passion. And from that place, we're creating, we're imagining, we're making up dreams that are the expression of our heart and soul. So you are really talking about, and, and you allude to it in this gorgeous quote, you are really talking about be developing a conscious, empowered relationship of our personal responsibility vis-a-vis -vis our dreaming, That's right. our actions and our beliefs and our responsibility, <laughs> along with the relationship that we have with the dream that life has for Beautifully us. Beautifully said. I often think of that wonderful uh, you know, painting at the Sistine Chapel. God and man are reaching for each other. That's beautiful. There's a longing. And you know, I really believe the core of manifestation is. I thought there was a, a Versace. <laughs> <laughs> it's that too. It Where is have I that been? too. We were created. Well, that's an interesting point. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we were created to create, and it's our God given birthright to create a life of joy, love, and abundance. So, part of our mission at Dream University is to redefine how you think about, speak about, and, and act upon your dreams. Okay, we, so yes, how did that, how has your life's work of being an explorer, a pioneer, a visionary, and a teacher of dreaming? How does that all crunch down to Marsha's edge? Uh, you know, it's, it's, I get really good at something, and then I realize that that's the end for me and not the beginning. And mm. I think most of us, we get so identified with our, with our egos. It's like our ego has become, instead of our ego in service to our soul, which mm. I think is how it's supposed to be, mm. it's like our soul has become enslaved by our ego. Mm. So, like, for me, when I get to be really good at something, I have a practice of saying, what's next? Well, you are really good at something, and so I want to explore, tease open, where you are in your own evolving process. I'm pulling the plug on the things that are the most successful in my life right now. Because? For because I've, I've gotten good at it, and therefore I'm no longer in the creation of it anymore. My personality... It's becoming rote. It's becoming rote, and um, you know, I, I think if you truly are a creator, which all of us are, mm -hmm. and we forget who we are, we get stuck in living in such a small world. And those of us that have a value on growth and development and creation and creating and be part of the creation process, that's death. So for example, I have a very successful multi-million dollar workshop company. Mm -hmm. I'm not scheduling any new workshops right now. Mm -hmm. People are going, what are you talking about? You're so good. People transform in your space. Yeah, but I have a bigger calling. So it's become off purpose for me to only be helping a few hundred or a few thousand. So I just said, okay, we're now going to use the internet, media, strategic partnerships and sponsorships. And somebody said to me, well, how are you going to do that? I said, I don't know. I've never done it before. It's fantastic. It's so exciting. I mean, you can hear it in my voice. I feel so alive. I just wrote a, a, an article.
Oh, we're going to have to tie her into her seat. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to. We're, we're, we're Where gonna, is the we're, strap? We're going to give people later a gift for 12 <laughs> ways to be a 21st Super. century visionary. But the first step is to get comfortable with uncertainty. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yes, know, there's indeed. no certainty. And yeah. if you're going to go white knuckled holding on to life, it, you know, and that's what was happening to me. If you want me to go back to my personal story, I do. you know, that I really was, I, I was engaged to be married. Mm -hmm. And a few, I was engaged for five years. And back in November, I really did a little soul searching that what do I need to say no more to in my life mm -hmm. what's no longer true for me and even though I love this man and we care deeply about each other each other I wasn't my best me we weren't bringing out the best in each other so I broke off the engagement and it was very painful as a matter of fact I stopped talking to my database and my people because I didn't know what to say I lost myself so what is in uh, and uh, Freeman joining in this too what is in um, what I'm hearing and what I, res what I recognize in, in your speaking is something that occurs in the process of making a creative project. There are cadences and seasons of um, excitation and inspiration, and then there are seasons of exhalation and what looks like a plateau. It looks like winter. It looks like there's a bunch of snow on the ground and the leaves are barren, and we don't really understand that below the surface of things, there are things germinating and ruminating. I love we, it. We've actually languaged this before. We've talked about the sacred I don't know. Mm -hmm. This sort of sacred mm -hmm. space, the, mm -hmm. the gap. There's a good book title. Yeah, the gap that... <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. The sacred Someone, I don't know. Someone's written some bestsellers here in the room. <laughs> hey, yeah, Martin. She's got 15. That's right. <laughs> we can learn a thing or two. Um, but no, this idea that we allow something to... And you spoke of it before, this sort of unfolding. Yeah. And, and, and yet if we're always sort of wandering and wondering and we're not actually moving forward with action, which I know is a big part of what you help people balance, um, then in fact we don't go anywhere. So the idea is to actually allow a space that can be filled. I love space. Yeah. I think the ability to empty, I mean, at least once a year I go into fasting and silence to empty, to become receptive, to get out of my head, more into my body and my being. But I also want to punctuate what you guys are saying because at different phases of life, we have access to different resources. So when you're starting something and you're in that initiatory energy, you have creative, let's get going. Mm -hmm. Well, that's different than when you're transitioning or when mm. you're completing something. And I think it's very important for us to uh, identify that grief is the appropriate response to loss. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when I closed down my marketing and media business in the National Press Building in Washington, D.C., and took a period of time in the I don't know who I am now, mm -hmm. I felt grief. Yeah. And I, so many people say, well, I don't want that. They put their hands out and they're saying, I'm not going to grieve my loss. Well, when you and what happens when you your do that? passion dries up, you get stagnant, you get stuck in some place of your development. And it lacks integrity. It uh, we does. have to we have to take a quick, quick break, but I want we'll to come be, back we'll right, 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 right to here because this whole piece of integrity uh, being integrated. And I and, 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 and this isn't the, the old version where we just say, oh, look, here are the rules I learned to play by. This is what character looks like. It's a deeper resonance. Denial of, what's of in my feelings will come back. Back to that Perfect. with Marsha Weeder and Freeman Michaels after this break. And we are back on Cutting Edge Consciousness with our special guest, Marsha Weeder and Freeman Michaels and uh, yours truly, Barnett Bain. Before the break, uh, we were about to uh, drill down into a conversation with Marsha that uh, she said something earlier about, and I'm going to paraphrase it now, about what happens when we deny our feelings. And you began to um, unpack this. Specifically our grief. When our we grief, deny our grief, our grief, that we allow something, a, a chapter, as it were, to, to sort of end and transition to the next one. Yeah, so loss doesn't have to be around a loved one. It can be loss of identity, loss of a role, loss of uh, making a career change. And I, you know, when you're in transition, it's challenging to be initiating something. So I recommend ritualizing the completion. And by the way, a noble phase, we talk about initiation, we talk about transition. A noble phase is called resting. Sometimes you just need to rest mm. and regroup. Restore. Restore, exactly. But We're, why is that? Yeah. So um, why has that been absent for so long from, from the discussion, from, from our languaging of 
of, of manifesting and dream work and creativity? Is this simply a function of our um, of our besotment <laughs> of, uh, of about yeah. around doing, doing, yeah. doing? We have such a value on achievement and accomplishment. I mean, when I told people years ago I was going into the business of making dreams come true, they said things to me like, Marsha, you... You're you such a dreamer. You used to be so credible. Can't you call <laughs> That's it... That's right. Can't you, can't you call You're intellectually setting? dubious. You know, I think goal <laughs> setting is useful and necessary, but dreaming takes us into our heart, our purpose, right. our mission, and our calling. Mm. You know, um, so I, I think we have such a value on achievement and accomplishment that some Something is sometimes we feel less than, valueless, or even worthless if we're not in achievement mode. And yet, the people that I know, and I'll include myself in this as well, who have been the most effective are people who do know pacing, including stop. Can we stop, empty, feel ourselves, feel the, d the depth of who we really are beyond what we're doing, achieving, and accomplishing? That's the sacred it's, I don't know. It's That's so the confrontive. It's, it's, it is. And, and, it's so and, confrontive. I know. I have, um, I come out of a world where you're only as valuable as the last thing you did. Right. Yes. And to go into a, um, a period of hiatus is one thing, but forced hiatus, like there's no, not, nothing's happening, there's no rain making being made, and that is so confrontive. It triggers so many of my own fragment. <gasps> Take a breath, Barnett. Yeah. Take so many of my own yeah. fragments, Absolutely. my own s self value, and my sense of will I ever be active again in the world? And to be courageous enough to, um, to and self respecting enough to feel those feelings wherever they take me is uh, it's a freaking trip, I have to say. Yeah, well, well and it's, it, it's also a space maker. The, the, the idea that there's a part of me that's terrified right now. Whenever I pretend like that's not true, I find myself pushing really hard because it doesn't allow for a particular kind of, and I'm gonna use the word integrity, that there's a part of me. Now it's just a part of me. It, it may feel when it's presenting itself like it's everything, but it's not, it's just a part of my experience. And the idea of stepping into something we really want without a, allowing for the part of us, the voice that's screaming, it may not work is not an in integrity. So there's a really delicate balance, isn't there, Marsha? Well, what you're talking about, as far as I'm concerned, is integrity at a soul level. That's it. Where we have to really know who we are. And if we're only identified with what we do, or our past, or our accomplishments, we don't even know who we are because we're a creation and a, a creative process happening in the moment. And for me, integrity is not just about walking your talk and keeping your agreement. We hear that a lot. Certainly that's part of it. Because sure. if I say I'm going to do one thing and I do another, or say I'm going to act on a dream and do nothing, that really activates the part of us, the doubter part of ourselves. And we, we can come back to that because that's an important conversation. But for me, integrity at a soul level is one, am I keeping my agreements with others? Yes. Am I keeping my agreements with myself? Harder. And at a soul level, am I keeping my agreements with God or whatever mm. you refer to as mm. your source? Because the ultimate act of integrity at a soul level is, am I living on purpose? Yeah. yeah and how it ties into dreams is where dreams come from as you make them up. Some are based on need, like food on the table. Some are best on desire, like writing a best-selling book. But the dreams that are the most profound are the ones that are the expression of your heart, your soul, your purpose, your mission, and calling. And if I never stop to ask, who am I really, I can climb to the top of the mountain and discover that it's the wrong mountain. Yeah. Well, there's something that comes up, comes up for me as you speak so powerfully to this. The, we make up our dreams... And inside, woven as a thread inside all of our dreams, there is uh, a kernel of, uh, a thread of, of gift, of grace, mm. that is a raw material that comes through us from this, again, back to this gorgeous quote, quote the dreams that life has for us. That is the, a thread of the, the experience we are given and we wrap it around and we become more connected to it and more intimate with it and closer to it and we begin to plumb the depths of it and it blooms us the way a rose opens. It, in the process of dreaming our dreams, that, that grace-given thread of the dream that's given to us by life actually blooms us. And I see that in the people that are close to me um, 
particularly people like you both who are big dreamers. Um, we start out thinking our life is about one thing, and it turns out that it is this very gorgeous, dynamic complexity of, of things. We start with other people's dreams. They, we start that's with our right. parents' Inherited dreams, dreams for us. Yeah. And, and that's it, just like imagination, yeah. like for us to ha be able to tap into our own dreams, our own imagination, and begin to form our own visions of what's possible. It's not easy. And, and, and yet the fascinating part is that there are threads of it. Uh, even though we may buy into someone else's idea of what might be best Even for us. in that, there is a thread of destiny. That's right. No, you're right. Seeds of destiny. Yeah. This, this work, this uh, work that we teach at Dream University, is now being taught in prisons and battered women's shelters and starting to infiltrate into the school system because I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't taught to dream. I was taught to be realistic. I was taught to problem solve. Visionary thinking is different than problem solving. And although we need to have the skills to solve problems, when life just becomes about checking stuff off your to-do list at the end of the day or at the end of the, our lives most people are going like oh is that all there is as opposed to we can empower ourselves and each other by just taking a step toward what it is that we want my, my big question is or my statement is that reality is an important part of the mix you have to know where you are in order to design the strategy for where you want to go mm. but the question is what has being realistic cost you yeah. It costs you years off your life. It's been medically proven that people with passion and dreams live much longer and have a better. There's even a, a medical term for it called apoptosis. Apoptosis is when your brain believes you've outgrown your usefulness, mm -hmm. which happens most often when people retire, get laid off, experience an empty nest, or when you stop. Mm -hmm, when you stop dreaming. The brain sends a message to the body that it's no longer needed, and we start to age prematurely. So the cure for living longer and having a better quality life is to get in touch with your dreams. What is it that you want? What is it that matters to you? And most importantly, what are you willing to do about it? Fantastic. It's really fantastic. Well, we need to uh, take a quick break, and we're going to, unfortunately, Marsha, have to say goodbye to you because we really really enjoyed having you here I want to you'll be back I, I have to we have to give her uh, info though and i will do we that. have it's, we have a bunch of things to dream university.com i'm actually on the site right now what is brilliant about this site is just how much amazing stuff is here and free <laughs> there's, there's a before we go, kit. We, okay go ahead before we go to that break, okay go ahead we, we will give this site but Marsha has a gift for all of our listeners and for all of our uh, podcast oh, uh, fantastic. subscribers. So there's two options. So uh, go to the homepage, dreamuniversity.com. What Freeman's talking about is that you can uh, access three free ebooks that we teach. We teach the CBAs instead of the ABCs. These three ebooks will help you get clear about what you want, believe in yourself, and take action. So have those with my blessing. And those of you that would like the article and uh, a one hour free MP3 that that I mentioned earlier, 12 ways to be a 21st century visionary. Go to dreamuniversity.com slash visionary. I want 21 ways to be a 12th century visionary. <laughs> we've already, we've already done Dream that. Dreamuniversity.com slash visionary. Please come join us. And next time I want to come back on because I want to, the big question I want to leave you with, and hopefully I'll talk about next time I'm back, is are you more committed to your dreams or to any doubt, fear, or reality that might try to get in your way? Mm. And the answer is in question. the action that you're taking you or not taking we love that question. today. Beautiful. And with that, we uh, unfortunately have to say goodbye to you, but we don't have to say goodbye to you, the audience, so please keep listening because we'll be right back we'll be here back. on Cutting Edge Consciousness. And welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with my co-host, Barnett Bain. Barnett, what a gift. What a gift. Um, I... You're still writing. I'm still You're writing still because there, you know what? There was so much um, fabulous stuff to unpack from Marsha that it's I'm fantastic. still taking notes. It's fantastic. And I absolutely knew that it would be um, as rich as it was. You know what she said that we didn't get back to that was so powerful? Um, it had to do with becoming more comfortable with uncertainty. And I think, you know, honestly, right now in the world that we're all facing, that's a critical key. Um, I don't know if it's a skill or an aptitude or how you want to describe what that is to allow for um, change because everything's changing so quickly. 
And I think, you know, I did some graduate work in business. And I think of, uh, I don't have an MBA. I did a, a different program at the Anderson but School of Business. But you played one on television. But I did you? play one on television, I too. Remember, yeah. How did you know? Uh, that was 90210. That's very funny. Uh, the first 90210, not the current one. Uh, I played a role in that, that the, show. Um, the um, Paleolithic one. Yeah. I was a broker, though. I don't know if I had an MBA or not. Who cares? Uh, the point being that, um, and I think about the classes I took in the program. It was called MD, actually, Management Development for Entrepreneurs. And all the things they taught, and even at that time, now this is going back to uh, 2005, the world was changing so quickly that a lot of what they were saying wasn't exactly true, and today it's been completely obliterated. So if you are dependent on MBA and the way you've done everything in this fast-changing business environment. Best practices environments. to next practices. And, and, and here's the reality. You know, I've been doing some business coaching. <laughs> this company we've been brought into, um, uh, the, the, what, what we were talking about he's got all these incredibly credentialed people. And yet, and yet, what he was saying is we're always fighting the clock because some, you know, 17-year-old kid in Idaho may create a, a solution that obliterates everything they've been working on. It's that quick and, and, and by accident as well, you know, that it's just a game for that kid. And he creates something that then all these people with important credentials, um, so they have to adapt quickly. They have to adapt quickly because the world is moving that fast. So that quote about the uncertainty that Marcia said, I can really relate to that. So many things that were true yesterday aren't true today or, or, or just aren't as true. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I heard her speaking to that, what occurred to me is that the capacity, the skill set that we develop to become comfortable, as mm. she said, as she put it, comfortable with uncertainty, to learn how to, to make a friend of uncertainty, that's developmental. Mm. And so much a part of where we are all moving, we're, we're learning to bring on this capacity. And what we're, uh, it seems to me that we are moving beyond a certain mindset and a heart set that was very fundamental and polarized and liked absolutes, was comfortable with absolutes and guarantees, blacks and whites. Yeah. And we are now um, seeing in our, in our world the effects of the intoxication of, of blacks and whites and what happens when we do not learn uh, in the way that Marsha is so incredibly models, learn this capacity to dream, to and dare to dream, and to steward dream, and to feed attentions to dream. To prioritize dream. To dreaming. prioritize It's dreaming. more important than the money she makes on the, on, on the yes. company she established. It's more important, and, and this is why I believe it is more important. When we have a dream, we begin to open to um, nuance and complexity. Mm. Our culture mirrors the extent to which we have lost that. You bet. So we have a culture that is polarized. Blacks and whites. You uh, cannot have a discussion that is not polarized, where people are not triggered because someone is not seeing the world exactly the way they see the world. So we have um, this appalling, arid dearth of imagination because we have lost the art of dreaming. Mm. So it's not simply um, Beautiful a sense. luxury, yeah. it's an imperative. It's an imperative. And she speaks yeah. uh, so eloquently to, um, to how to fire up, how to prime the pump of dreaming, what are the action steps, and these are all about, these are all about learning how to get your bike going with yeah. action steps, and at some point, dreams begin to dream themselves. You get, as she said in that wonderful quote, at some point, you reach up, you participate as a dreamer. The whole of glorious creation is reaching down to meet you, like in that ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And at some point, the dream is dreaming you. Yeah. And then we are in a com gorgeous complexity, this ecstatic c complexity where the, the world is crea a creation it's, of it's the meeting future. Us. It's meeting us. Yeah. We we reach for it and it embraces us and there's something wonderful that happens that's beyond our capacity to vision right now or to perceive or to conceive, but it's, we are birthing into it in real time. And I love the soul integrity. 
It's in oh, my soul integrity. <laughs> That's the great it's a seed. It's yeah. a it's an innate it's it, an innate God given seed and we it's a, both a gift and a choice. And we come in it and it it either blooms within us if we pay attention to it. Or it dies an unpotentiated well, hour see, now there it is. The, the soul integrity piece is to listen to that zing. Remember the zing? She, the first thing. The she's zing. A, she's a zinger. She's a zinger. <laughs> so, I mean, and you're talking even further about activating the zinger to really create an environment. Where well, she more talks more... about, I mean, I know her, and she's only talking about finding the zing, paying attention to the zing. There's only so much. How much language can, you know, when we... W- you and I have a tendency to pack <laughs> things into <laughs> into a black hole of matter, but she has made a career out of unpacking that right, right, into right. actionable steps. We need her back. So we need her, yeah, we yeah. need her back. No, of course. But in, 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 in the part of the conversation, too, that I thought was spectacular is this space, the allowing for the space. Look, in the world we live in today, you know, we don't there's have so much distraction. There's like, you know, the, the empty moments. There's no empty moments. I mean, the minute you're, it's empty, you rush to the, the, the computer or the something. I mean, there's always an MP3 player. We cannot sit in a car without putting on the radio. That's not right. that we are suggesting to any of our listeners to turn they should off turn the off thing. Billy the Brain show, but not our show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so He's coming up next. Turn him coming off. up no, next, no, 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 turn no, it don't, off don't, don't and turn just off Billy. We love have it. a little bit of repose, but yeah, yeah. not until we're through. <laughs> No, but the idea of the empty space and allowing it to be filled, and, and the language, of course, you've used before is to discover and to be discovered by something that is, uh, again, has that zing quality, that kind of way in which we we have some motivation to do something, enough so that we actually listen to and begin something without having to know precisely what it's going to look like, you know? Well, there's a humility mm. in dreaming. Now, not always... And I'm sure when we have her back, we'll ask her this. But not all, I'm sure that when people first come to Marsha, initially, it's all about I'm going to power through this and I'm going to power through that. But, you know, you spend any time with her, you can see there is a humility mm. in dreaming. There is a sense of what possibilities are and, and the willingness to step out, in, out of what your zone of familiarity to potentiate and to take action and to build into a life of living those things. But there is a humility that understands it may not show up at all that way, yeah. but it will show up in a way that tends to the seed of what you and I have called fantasia yeah. that underlies the fantasy of things, that kernel of, of grace that's threaded through all of our dreams. And they get, they, they're not so much a string of dreams as they are a passel. They're like a, they're like a womb of dreams. And all together these dreams add up to something called a vision. Hmm. Uh, and I want to have her back again to get into the vision piece too, because therein also is some of the wisdom language that uh, we want. We've talked about having people on the show to talk about um, wisdom from the perspective of being uh, of having done this work for many years, yeah. having shared it with, with many thousands and thousands of people. And what are the gifts personally that come out of that kind of service? Mm. What are those? What is this new wisdom tradition that we are birthing? Oh, in I reality? love it. I love it. It's such a great way to, to frame it. It's a new wisdom tradition because I think one of the trip chords is we like to look back at, let's say, uh, ancient civilizations, which are fine. I'm not saying that they didn't have an incredible wisdom uh, tradition, but the wisdom tradition that's evolving today is not that it's new and, and sometimes i think we get so enamored with oh like native american that tradition was so great and i'm sure it was and i'm not diminishing it necessarily i'm just saying that whatever we're creating today has its own qualities and essences and it's growing of itself and so i think sometimes we trip on trying to look back a lot versus looking forward with just a sense of what was done in the past but creating our own i think uh, you're practices absolutely right and our own i uh, mean we mystery we Tradition. We do not. It is. It, we do not acknowledge that uh, we are an evolutionary species, and that lights are coming on mm. when we become fundamental about anything. That's right. And seek right. to explain present circumstances by either becoming enamored with the past or becoming sentimental about the past. Right. 
there is nothing in my adolescence <laughs> that could prepare me right. for dealing with the responsibilities of being an adult male. That's right. Uh, well, it, however, there, there, there is there much. Threads. There, there, is, threads, there is. There are threads. But just threads. There are threads of yeah. destiny, and there is everything in being an adult man today. Yeah. That has to do with with healing and being responsible for the uh, for the younger man that I was. That's the integrity all piece. Simultaneous. That's the integrity piece we're talking about. That it allows for something, but it doesn't over-identify with it. In other words, you allow for the part of me that is still recovering from... Uh, whether it's... Uh, whether it's Sta Barbie Stapleton Barbie leaving Sta me. Whether it's Barbie Stapleton <laughs> yeah. or a high school or Mayans, right. whatever, whatever right. it is, right. yes. when nothing changes until we do. That's and right. when we become close and intimate with the capacity to dream and mm. we become empowered as dreamers with the kinds of tools and skill sets that Marsha um, Marsha provides, when we have those training wheels on, yeah. eventually we become uh, masterful at it. And all of these fragments of, of self, whether it's in this life or past lives or future lives, the whole thing, I'm going to go down the esoteric road yeah, for two great. seconds. I promise I'm not going to lose you all too, <laughs> we'll, for too long. We'll get it back. We'll get it back. <laughs> you change now. You change everything. It's you included. change the past. Yes. You change the future. Yeah. You change When you change, the seat of consciousness is in the present. And when you have your hand on the tiller, yeah. you change it all. It allows for all of it. It's, it is all part you of it. You grow it all. Yeah. It's all part of it. No part is, is disconnected. Uh, no part is is unnecessary. The, 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 those experiences, whether it was Barbie Stapleton or my version of that, whose name was slightly different, but not that different, uh, the same pieces. Who was it? Maybe she's listening. Oh, who was it? D Denise Garcia. So if yeah. anybody oh, knows how to get so in touch to with that. Denise Garcia, <laughs> right. I'm sure she's got to call in last and minute. there will be a hundred dollar prize. And I'm turning red. You see how that it's still <laughs> it's that active in my experience. But see, that's important, Barnett, that I can actually tap into the part of me. And, and, and this, of course, is what you said in, in, in sort of working with those past parts. They're not they're, they're, they're still present in very real ways. You know, I just got back from New York City, and New York City has so many magical moments for me Pete. that are all part Tim. of my, uh, my buddy Timmy. Yeah, I saw Tim, had an incredible experience about that. We'll have to talk about that. Obviously, we don't have time today. In fact, I don't even know where we I, – I stopped looking at my watch. I looked at my engineer and say, where am I at? Where is How it? much longer where is can our we engineer? talk? Who is the, who's running this train? I'm, I'm at... Uh, is that 11 oh, minutes yeah, yeah, no, 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 over? No, 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 I've got seven minutes. i got seven, seven minutes. minutes. Seven minutes. Let's hear the whole deal. Okay, I'll tell the story. Um, I grew up with Tim in San Francisco, and, you know, he was my room... He was my best friend. He was my roommate uh, after college, and when he went for, to New York, I didn't know how to let him go. We were that close. I originally was going to move with him. Instead, I drove him out there. I had a drive away. And uh, I, I, I drove him out there and dropped him off with uh, a friend of, uh, of, not a direct friend, but a friend of a friend who he was now going to live with. And I saw him off into his New York journey. And there, it was so interesting to see the various iterations of him and the various ways that his life unfolded. I had a, a, a sensory experience. I haven't seen Tim in, 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 a, in a quite a while, over a year, a couple of years, I think. And I was going to New York, and I was going to see him, and I had this sensory experience. I don't know if it was in a dream or if it was in my life, and it doesn't really matter, of who he was. And it was an image of him that I had a sense isn't who he was, but it was a potential of, of who he could have been. And I had the same experience going to meet him of his wife, his current wife, like I saw her in a particular way. And then he, I met him, and it was a different person I met. But it's so interesting, and this is sounding esoteric and weird, but I, I meet with glimpses or images of how things might have been uh, in my own Extrapolated life. from a certain past yeah, I, experience. Yeah, see, this is, this is one of those things. It's like I meet someone, and they're not Tim, but they've got qualities in them, and, I'm, and I see them as a possibility of how things might have played out. I can do this easier in my own life, and, and specifically with parts of myself that I don't know what to do with. We've said this before in, in terms of judging people. When I'm judging someone, I say, that person's an idiot. It's very important in my consciousness so today I. to say, and so am I. And so it's like I meet these various selves that I didn't necessarily become or that are parts of me playing out in, in, in people's lives. And I see them in a particular way where I go, wow, that's part of me. 
either expressed or unexpressed. And how do you feel when you recognize that self? It was that, really uh, powerful. I was really impressed to when see... When you recognize yourself in that. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Getting. Well, no, it, it's interesting because sometimes I'm repulsed. I want to kill that person. In other words, I, I, I don't you like don't that. shoot the messenger. Yeah, I want to... Well, and, and, and more importantly... Shatter the mirror. It's the part of me that I don't like, and so am I, that I want to get rid of. Um, and then other times I do a whole thing of it's it, the, we've talked about this before the sort of hero worship oh they're so great and I want to deflect to them because I don't want to own my own greatness even though whatever they're demonstrating is totally capacity within me it's a skill set perhaps so these ways that you really took me to the edge with this piece because this is my edge is where I see myself reflected back to me everywhere where I see possibilities that either played out or didn't play out is just potentialities, not as firm, hard, this is the way of the world, everything's got to be like this, don't you know, if you do this, this, and this, this is the result, that sort of black and white, you know, on or off thinking, uh, that there is a more dimensional perspective of things and of people where I'm allowing mystery, where I'm marveling at this man that my friend has become without saying you have to be who I remember you to be so that we connect still. I don't know if we connect. And, and yet then I find ways that we do. And that's the kind of relationship in the world where I'm not holding on as tightly. You're letting loose of the certainty. That's right. You're letting loose it's exactly what Marcia said earlier, actually. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm tying it back, actually, to something that she Please. said earlier. But um, you're not dragging around your story of the past and that is how I think uh, she referred to it as being one of the keys to um, becoming not only, well, her language was um, comfortable in uncertainty. My language is also sane in the face of uncertainty because it, we get, it gets more and more dissonant yeah. and we are more and more deluded yeah. okay. and more and more living in a completely disconnected experience than from what is. But it is very triggering. To, um, to be fully present in an experience like that, you reconnect with your friend, and to be aware of all of the projections that you are seeing yeah. along from the place That's of arrested it. development. That's you haven't it. seen him in 10 years. Yeah. And the disconnect between what is and to be self-respecting enough to, and big enough to hold the contrary feelings That's right. and then allow what precipitates out of it to unfold without having to collapse the field one way or the other, just to allow it. All right, so I'm going to go far. Go far. I wonder if I was more locked into my perception, how I would have responded to, I met him at his work and he came down the lobby, him when I saw him. And I wonder if he would have shown up differently. Now, whether he would have literally shown up differently or whether I would have perceived him differently. In other words, there wasn't a lot of Are room. Are you making writing bad movies again? There wasn't a lot of room <laughs> in my <laughs> schema, in my worldview for stuff that didn't fit in the past, I would want to marginalize it or obliterate it or redefine it so it fit. And today, today, I'm more open to the unfolding and the allowing. I love it. And with that, we got to say goodbye. Marsha, listen, one more time. Marsha's uh, dreamuniversity.com. www.dreamuniversity.com. Amazing opportunity to get some free stuff. Big gifts, big, big gifts. free stuff. And, and for those of you who listen, keep coming back. Keep listening. If you enjoy the show, send it on to a friend. And if you want free stuff, <laughs> that's right. call Freeman. That's right. And, and tune in next time. Thanks for listening.